Yo, what's up my fellow creatives, Adrian Boisel here. I wanna do a quick video on graphic design terminology. Why is this important? Because as a graphic designer, you're gonna be working on teams, working with other designers, working for people that know graphic design better than you do, and you need to know your terminology. You need to be able to hold conversations and people know that you're an expert. On top of that, you need to be able to communicate to your customer and educate your customer on some of these terminologies so that they understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Without that, you're not gonna have a foundation. So let's jump into the 33 most essential graphic design terms that I think that you guys need, and we'll make it quick. We're gonna have a lot of fun, so let's go into it. All right, so number one, and we're gonna go alphabetically here, is alignment. Alignment can be in typography, it can be within the page, it can be within a box. There's a lot of different formats for alignment, but making sure that your text is aligned, that it's aligned with the other typography, that things are aligned. It's very easy to tell when something within a design is not aligned. So alignment is a really big keyword. Number two is bleed. That little extra bleed is usually used in printing and it refers to the edge of the sheet that will be trimmed off. In design terms, the bleed is the artwork or the background color that extends into this area in the case so that it gets cut off, whether it's in a trade show booth, a business card, a flyer, or a backdrop banner for a trade show booth, you don't get this stuff cut off and you have enough space. So using bleeds in all of your designs, whether it's gonna be printed or not, is a really good strategy to make sure your design has plenty of space. The third term is brand identity, the visual version of a brand. The brand identity is made up of everything that relates to the brand. That could be your logo, your typefaces, your color palettes, your slogans, your tone of voice, your website, packaging, and all your other marketing materials. When designers talk about branding, it usually involves developing all aspects of a brand identity. If you don't know this term, you do now, and this is gonna be something you're gonna use probably almost more than anything else. Term number four is CMYK, cyan, magento, yellow, and black. That's what the K stands for. This is different from web, which you're gonna have RGB, but it's the color mode that you're gonna use for all types of printing. It's the four colors, and each of these four colors are widely used in the printing industry. Term number five, and this is one of my favorites, is contrast. Contrast is the arrangement of opposite elements on a page. In other words, when two things are different on the page, like black and white, those are very contrasting, right? Red and yellow, or red and green, those are good contrasting colors. Light versus dark. Contrast is a really important term. Term number six, gradient. Gradients are a gradual change from one color or shade to another, like fading from red, a dark red, to a lighter red, or red to an orange. Term number seven, hierarchy. One of the five basic principles of typography design. Hierarchy creates organization and direction in the design, and it helps give order to the text and the elements on the page. Term number eight, kerning. Kern is the space between two specific letters or characters, and the process of adjusting that space between letters or characters. Kerning can increase legibility of a word and can even help make a text block more readable. Term number nine, leading, spelt leading, L-E-A-D-I-N-G. Leading is a graphic design jargon for line spacing. It refers to the space between the two baselines of the text. The larger the leading, the more space between the text, giving it more room to breathe and generally making it look nicer. Term number 10, logo mark. A logo of a company that does not contain a brand name itself, usually a shape or a character used to visually represent the company. Logo marks are more easily shown than described. So think of the Twitter's bird or the Apple icon. Term number 11, margin. The margin is the blank space between the edge of a page and the content within. The margin ensures that everything, but especially the text and the body copy, sits properly and comfortably in the document. The width of a margin can really affect the overall feel and look of a design. Term number 12, mock-up. Mock-ups are used commonly for mocking up logo designs, mocking up iPad designs on a computer, mocking up on a billboard. Mock-ups are the way that you take the design and you show it in the real world. Term number 13, monospaced. A monospaced typeface, which specifically refers to typography, is a typeface where each character is the same width all occupying the same amount of horizontal space. They can also be called fixed pitched, fixed width, or non-proportional typefaces. Term number 14, palette. A palette is the color scheme that is chosen for a specific design or brand, making up a part of a brand's style guide. A palette should be carefully chosen so that the colors in it work harmoniously together and help make a design successful as possible. Term 15, Pantone, or known as PMS. The Pantone matching system is a standardized color scheme that's used for printing in addition to graphic design. 
is used in a number of other industries, including product and fashion design and manufacturing. Term number 16, pixel. It is the smallest basic unit of programmable color on a computer, and all the digital images are made up of a larger number of individual pixels. Basically, that's very, very, very small, but very important. Term 17, PPI or DPI, which is what I like to use, is dots per inch. These are two measurements used to measure the resolution of a graphic. So with web, you're gonna usually use 72 or 150 DPI. And if you're gonna do print, you wanna do at least 150 to 300 DPI to get the highest resolution possible. DPI stands for dots per inch. PPI stands for pixels per inch. Term number 18, resolution. The term resolution refers to the number of units measured in either DPI or PPI, which we just talked about, that occupy a linear inch in an image, both the screen and in print. Resolution is used to denote the quality of an image, and it can generally be assumed that the higher the resolution, the better quality of the image. Term number 19, RGB. We talked a little bit about this when we said CMYK, but RG stand, RGB stands for red, green and blue. It's the color mode that is used for when you're designing for anything digital. These three colors, red, green, and blue, can be combined in many different proportions to create any color in the visible spectrum, as each color refers to light. They grow brighter the more they are combined. It's not magic, it's just design. Term number 20, raster. Another kind of graphic image, which is also similar to the pixels that we talked about, is an image made up of certain number of pixels. Each pixel has its own color, hue, saturation, and transparency, which helps make up the image as a whole. Term number 21, script type, or script typography. Script type is a font that's based on a modern or traditional handwriting style. There's two forms of script fonts, formal and casual. Formal script fonts, the more traditional of the two, are based on the 17th and 18th century letter forms and they're used on documents like invitations, diplomas, to give a sense of elegance. Casual script forms became popular in the 1970s and often appear to be created by a wet brush, showing more of an active hand. Term number 22, serif. A serif is a small line that appears on the end of a letter in some typefaces or typography. These typefaces are known as serif fonts. Serif fonts are easier to read in the printed design as the serifs make letters more distinctive and their shape makes them even easier to read and recognize. Term number 23, the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a helpful way of aligning the subject of an image and making it aesthetically pleasing as possible. Imagine a three by three grid over your picture and align the picture subject with the guidelines or the intersection points where the lines meet or allow the picture's different elements to flow through the grid. I use this all the time in photography. I use this all the time in design. Rule of thirds is a key that you have to know. Term number 24, sans serif. Sans serif is a French or without, so you can probably guess that it's without the extra line on the typography or font, without serifs at the end of it. Usually sans serif fonts are easier to read on the web and digital screens, for instance. Apple uses sans serif fonts, Helvetica, Helvetica New, and many others, like Futura. Term number 25, saturation. Saturation is a term that's used in chemistry and photography on top of design, but design-wise, it means color. Put simply, saturation is the intensity and brilliance of a color. Saturation is usually expressed as a number which represents the degree to which it differs from white. This means that if the saturation is very low, a color will appear white or close to it. And if the saturation is very high, a color will appear brighter and more intense. Term number 26, style guide. A style guide is an important part of branding. They determine the correct set of standards for the branding and the business or publication. Anything from a business card to a multi-page website or a trade show booth, a style guide is used to ensure that all brand assets have complete uniformity or cohesiveness, as I like to say, and are kept looking spick and spam. Term number 27 is symmetry. In everyday terms, symmetry refers to the sense of harmonious balance and proportion. It's something that most people are introduced to at an early age. In design terms, one of the fundamental principles of design, it does much of the same. Symmetry is used to add balance and create a sense of harmony in your design. Term number 28, tracking. Tracking is the distance from the top of the highest ascender to the bottom to the lowest ascender, and it's usually measured in points. Term number 29 is slab serif type. We're not done with yet with serifs. Slab serif fonts are an offshoot of serifs, and they're characterized by thick serifs. The thicker the serif, can be blocked or rounded. One popular example of a rounded slab serif font is Courier. We've all seen that font. Term number 30, and this one's a must, is typography. The term typography refers to two things. Firstly, the style and the appearance of printed words. Secondly, 
and most importantly, it refers to the art and the procedure of arranging type to make it readable, legible, attractive, and engaging in print or digital designs. Typography is the most important keyword on this list. Term number 32 is vector. A vector is a graphic image that is made up with mathematical equations, and they're defined in terms of 2D points connected by anchor points. So you have two anchor points that are connected with a line, whether it's a bent line or a straight line or a curved line, that makes it scalable to any size without actually becoming blurry. Design term number 33 in the last is white space. White space, despite its seemingly misleading name, does not need to be white. It is a space which can be any color pattern or texture between different elements in the design that are essential in creating a successful design. Think of white space as giving a design visual breathing room, like some sort of design meditation. It can also be called negative space, which is what I call it a lot, which is slightly less misleading. So I'm curious, how many of those design terms did you already know? Drop a comment down below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. But this is a really important 33 essential list of the design terminologies that as a designer, you must know, whether you're a graphic designer, web designer, or motion designer. You gotta know these terms, practice them, watch this video over and over again. And if you need, I'll put a link down in the description to a PDF that you can download to these 33 design terms. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Adrian Boisel, and as always, keep looking up.